This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. We did have an important discussion this morning with stakeholders and experts in the area of youth opportunity and employment. Uh, there is, according to CIBC, currently um, the ratio uh, of youth unemployment compared to that of the general population. It's now 2.4 times higher youth unemployment compared to the general population. That's at a record high. Uh, the Toronto Dominion Bank is estimating that the cost to the Canadian economy over the next 18 years is going to be around $22 billion of sustained youth unemployment today. So there's a real economic cost as well as a social cost uh, to this issue. Uh, today we heard from experts representing student organizations, representing universities and colleges and education, and representing uh, companies and employers. And what was clear is we do need more data and information. Stats Canada has to study the issue of uh, unpaid work. Uh, Stats Canada currently tracks young people who are working and young people who are looking for work, but it does not track unpaid work. And there's a growing uh, um, level of unpaid work in Canada for young people. Secondly, we do have a role as a federal government in helping create standards uh, and principles uh, of what is acceptable in terms of internship opportunities that provide transferable skills uh, for the future and that do not displace uh, paid work. Thirdly, there's clearly uh, the need for more federal investment in everything from summer jobs programs uh, to potentially funding more paid interns so that organizations and companies that can benefit from uh, internship opportunities and, and in which young people can benefit from working uh, could have some level of federal support for doing so. Uh, we view this as, as a critical issue to our uh, equality of opportunity in Canada for middle class Canadian families. This is critical and we also view it as, as an important part of Canada's economic competitiveness. Uh, some of the companies we met with today are international companies and we want to strengthen their cases to why they ought to invest in Canada. Having good investment in young Canadians that can enable them to, to maximize their skills and economic uh, success is good for business. Yeah, well. I, think, I think a couple of things. One is that uh, the nature of work has changed so rapidly in the last 10 years and technology <coughs> And, and globalization are driving a lot of these changes, but the rate of change is actually going to increase. So it's, it's critical for us as a federal party and as a future federal government to actually understand this, to have the data and to, to look at best practices in terms of training and retraining and lifelong learning, not just in Canada and in some of the provinces, but globally. Uh, if you look at, the, for instance, in, in, in Germany, uh, where there's less of a skills gap, uh, where there's never been a diminution of the respect paid to skilled and professional trades, as an example. Uh, the level of internships and apprenticeships there that are part of, part of uh, the German education and economy. Um, we, can, we can actually develop in working with stakeholders here in Canada, from education, from uh, companies, uh, and from student organizations, we can develop by looking at practices here in Canada and looking at practices globally, we can develop um, a remarkable set of policies that can make Canada a world leader in this area. And if we do that, that's going to be really good for middle class Canadian families, but it's also going to be good for economic growth and prosperity. In our